Those people are the true weak people. They are the ones who are susceptible to shaming into believing something. I recently did a live stream where I watched, for the first time, the latest video from Ian Danskin, aka Innuendo Studios, titled, The Alt-Right Playbook, How to Radicalize a Normie. Ian crafts an elaborate caricature that may or may not exist in any significant amount in the real world. This caricature then proceeds to get, well, cast repeatedly into all sorts of stereotypes. It's basically an elaborate fiction. Ian does not use legitimate criticism, logic, reason, rationality to make any of his points. All of the things that Ian says can be cast back upon him and upon the section of YouTube that is typically considered leftist, aka bread tube. It can all be cast back onto them. The trick is that this system that he's creating with this alt-right playbook series, it appears primarily due to the big words used and the length of the videos, it appears to be an intellectual framework that proves that leftists are right and conservative YouTube is all wrong and full of evil, stupid idiots that are radical and neo-Nazis. But it's projection. Ian is guilty of all of the things that Ian is claiming that the other people are guilty of. The various things about indoctrination, isolation, and so on are things that are far more commonly associated with this so-called leftist YouTube than you ever see with the conservative YouTube. The interesting thing about it, and keep in mind I'm not a conservative, so I'm not particularly biased towards one side or the other, but I find it interesting that what they call conservative YouTube, in a general sense, will use mostly rational arguments, mostly evidence-based arguments. At least they provide evidence. What the alt-right playbook does is not provide evidence, but instead make large numbers of assumptions, presumptions, lots of statements full of implications that you, the viewer, are supposed to simply accept and move on. The problem is that within one single sentence of the alt-right playbook, there may be eight different little assumptions that pile up that you're just supposed to accept without critical thought. Assumptions about <clears throat> who consumes comic books. Assumptions about who goes to certain forums. About who it is that is considered to be alt-right. It's arguable that there is no definition of alt-right at this point due to the word being used to basically describe anyone that so-called leftists disagree with. And that's basically where we stand on this issue. This whole thing is designed specifically to give people a way to dismiss all criticism, all dissent, anything that disagrees with the ideology that they have chosen, because, you know, why not? Why have your ideas challenged when you can just point to Ian's videos and be like, Oh look, it's the alt-right playbook playing out. But, because these people are being lulled by storytelling into shutting off their logic centers and simply accepting all of these packed implications that are supposedly well-researched, that are supposedly very intellectually rigorous, very fact-based, but all of these implications, no evidence is provided for them, yet these people still believe them. So all of these people believe all of these implications and they just go with it. And then they don't go further than that. They don't look at it and realize, wait a minute. So Ian's saying this thing about indoctrination, but that applies to him and his side. Now have I looked at the right wing? to see if that applies to their side? 
Well, no, he's already told me that and I'm accepting it, so I'm not actually going to see if these right-wing nutjobs are providing any sort of evidence-based argument. He says they're not, other people say they're not, so I'm just going to believe that because that is the easiest, laziest, most intellectually energy-saving way to go. No one questions him when they watch his videos, ergo, they believe these packed implications that he shoves into every sentence. He builds this elaborate framework that simply boils down to indoctrination. Uh, you know, you get the idea. People buy into it, and that's the end. You can't tell them anything at that point, because now they think they have this weapon that they can use to throw away anybody that says anything that might contradict what they have already decided that they believe. With the conservative side of things, yes, to some extent, that does happen as well in the other direction. The key thing is, it seems to be far more evidence-based, and evidence is at least provided in some cases, whereas with leftist YouTube, Evidence tends to be very scarce. What I see on so-called right-wing YouTube channels tends to be more evidence and logic-based, more rational. What I see on so-called left-wing or bread-tube channels tends to be more of an argument to shaming. Um, they are, instead of being logical, rational arguments, they are social arguments. They are status arguments. If you believe this way, you are stupid. If you believe this way, you are indoctrinated. You are dumb. You are weak. You are vulnerable. You are a victim of these evil people that don't believe what we do. So it's sort of dismissive, not just ideologically, but also in a humanitarian manner. It dismisses your very identity as a person and your ability to think for yourself. If you disagree with bread tubers, it's not because you disagree based on logic. It's that you disagree because these other people have taken advantage of your, in, your complete intellectual weakness and inability to think for yourself. It's because you're incapable. You are somehow a lesser person because you fell for it. Meanwhile, you go to the other side, there's no personal evaluation involved. They're not trying to shame you. While they might be laughing at the person that they're talking about, they're not laughing at you, the viewer, who might disagree with them. Or at least in the general case, they're not doing that. And that's the big difference that I see. They're not trying to ridicule you into believing as they do. They're trying to convince you. And even if that convincing does not take the best of forms, and even if that convincing is not framed the best way, not worded the best way, if even though there may be flaws in that presentation, even though they may stray from logic from time to time, overall, what you see is logic on the right, and feelings on the left. And that's the problem. That's the reason that all of these people who are moderate, centrist, not left or right, seem like they're on the right. Because the only people who are on the so-called left at this point are the people who are susceptible to being shamed into falling into those traps. This is also the reason that you see a lot of really, really negative, angry, vile people on the left today. Those people are the true weak people. They are the ones who are susceptible to shaming into believing something rather than thinking for themselves. They are the ones who are susceptible for the most part and more heavily so to adopting what I call secondhand opinions things that they didn't think up, things that they haven't researched, they just blindly believe. Yes, there are people like that on the right too. There are people like that all across the spectrum. But you see a much larger concentration of that on the left wing than you do in the right wing. By and large, the ditto heads, the Rush Limbaugh lunatics, the people who are like, if you try to impeach Trump, there's gonna be a revolution. Those people are a minority. 
and they're largely laughed at by left and right alike because even the right now is composed more so of centrist people than hard right wingers. The Limbaugh types are a dying breed. So that's it. That's why the Innuendo Studio stuff falls apart. Because ultimately, it's all a bunch of bad logic. It's all appeals to your feelings. It's all attempting to shame you. It's all projecting their own bad behavior onto the people that they ideologically disagree with to shame you into not agreeing with the people they disagree with. And that's not a logical argument. That's not rational. And frankly, if you really think about it, that would make you the idiot for falling for it. That would make you, if you fall for their shaming, exactly the same thing that they are shaming. That, my friends, is the problem with Innuendo Studios, the alt-right playbook, and the problem with BreadTube in general. Good night.